That, that, that is enough said. What's up, Heat Nation? Your boy Ernest here, back with another Miami Heat Talk video. Man, I love saying that. Hope you guys are enjoying your Thursday, you guys. Don't forget to social support, like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now, off we go on another Miami Heat Talk adventure. Guys, yesterday was a great game. The Miami Heat defeat the Atlanta Hawks 120 to 111 on preseason action. The Miami Heat go 3-1 and one in preseason, which is really cool. Uh, I know the preseason record doesn't really mean much, but I will say this. There's a lot of games, you guys, in this preseason that the Miami Heat could have lost and let slip away, but they closed out the games and won. The game against New Orleans, yesterday against San Antonio, yesterday against Atlanta. The Miami Heat had leads and really like close games going into the fourth quarter. And you have our young players that are closing out these games, holding these leads and closing out games. And that's a great experience for some of the young players we have. Guys like Kalel Ware, Kishad Johnson, Josh Christopher, Isaiah Stevens, Pele Larson. You know, they're holding it down at the end of these games. And even though it's not the hugest deal in the world, it's great to see that these young players are learning the Miami Heat way. This is a great bolt for the future. However, we had a lot of players yesterday step up and had some really good games. And I will say this, you guys, I was in very, uh, very impressed yesterday, not just with the offense that the Miami Heat's throwing out there, but the defense, you guys, the defense was incredible. And I understand the stigma that we had with this starting lineup before the regular season. I know a lot of people were not liking this starting lineup going out there. Bam Adebayo, Nikola Jovic, Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Terry Rozier. There were a lot of questions going with this lineup into the season. Would it affect chemistry? Because you have five scorers and four of them are ball dominant players but then also you thought there was going to be a lot of lacking in the defensive end i will say this you guys tyler hero and nikola jovic have stepped up incredibly tyler hero is looking more of a pest defensively the last few games you guys he's been stealing balls like jimmy butler going ahead and intercepting passes running down the lane and finishing at the rim I love the play yesterday when he made the steal and he was running to the rim smiling because I know in his head, he's probably thinking, I don't play defense. <laughs> so it was great to see Tyler Hero do that. You guys, Nikola Jovic is just more impressive defensively. He's holding his own. He's getting to the right spots. He doesn't look lost anymore like he did the beginning of last season. An upgrade. And this is definitely a beautiful thing to watch. And another hats off to our guy, man, Jimmy, a.k.a. Himmy Butler, playing the second night of a back-to-back -back in a preseason game. I mean, that's telling you right there, you guys, that we are seeing a more determined, confident, and motivated Jimmy Butler. In 21 minutes last night, you guys, he drops 24 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists. Wasn't alone. Tyler Hero in 23 minutes, 19 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. It's like I've said, you guys, the great thing about this starting lineup on any given night, any of these guys or multiple players can drop 20 to 30 points on you. Because Bam has 7, Nikola Jovic has 5, Terry Rozier has 6 points. Not the greatest showing, but you had other players step up. But it's also our bench, you guys. Our bench, and it's like I've said before, this Miami Heat team is probably one of the deepest teams we've had in the Jimmy Butler era. You get Haywood Highsmith, 17 minutes off the bench with 16 points. Duncan Robinson has a bad shooting night, but we know that's Duncan. You're going to have your good nights, you're going to have your bad nights. But Alec Burks has been showing that signing him on a minimum contract was kind of similar to when we signed Josh Richardson last year. He provides that spark off the bench. Nine points, five rebounds, two assists off the bench. You get six points, four rebounds from Jaime Jaquez. Now, I know a lot of these aren't the greatest showing, but collectively, this team did it. And defensively, I'm going to keep saying that, you guys. This Miami Heat team looks like a completely different team defensively. But we know that this Miami Heat team has always ranked top 10, top five in the defensive effort. The biggest problem that we had last year was the offense. And we're seeing that fixed. 
Tyler Hero and Terry Rozier are showing that as a backcourt, they can work together. They can make this work. Yeah, Tyler Hero takes some bad shots at some times, but he's playing a different game this year. He is doing a little bit more of catching and shooting, which is going to help this roster, especially when you're playing backcourt with Terry Rozier. Don't, uh, Tyler Hero needs to have a kind of a mindset of a Clay Thompson when he was playing with Steph Curry. I'm not saying that Tyler Hero and Terry Rozier are at the level of Clay Thompson and Steph Curry. I'm saying that is the mirror image you should have for your offense. And I think it's working, you guys. Now, the huge bummer, and I'm going to continue to mention this every time, is the fact that we're not seeing Kalel Ware cracking this rotation. And I shortly mentioned this yesterday, and I'll say it again today, you guys. He needs time to develop. Spoh's seeing something that we don't see. Yes, he can catch lobs and dunk. Yes, he can block shots. Yes, he can rebound. Yes, he can hit a few threes. But at the end of the day, you need to be connected with the players on the court. We're probably not going to see Kalel Ware get more time until Thomas Bryant or Kevin Love get injured throughout the season. Because right now, you guys, the rotation, it's our starting five that we talked about. And I mentioned this yesterday, but I'll say it again. You're going to have Duncan Robinson and Jaime Jaquez be your sixth and seventh man off the bench. You saw both Haywood Highsmith and Alec Burks play yesterday. I don't think that's going to be the case of the season. You're going to see either or, unless... Alec Burks is taking more of the backup point guard role, which I thought was going to Drew Smith, but he only played one minute yesterday. You know, it's, that's Spoism, as Shane Battier used to like to say. You know, Spo does things sometimes, and you think, okay, this is the way he's going to go, and then he just flips it on you. That's probably what makes him one of the best coaches in the NBA, because you can never figure him out. But it's like I've said before, you guys, this Miami Heat roster can easily be 11 to 12 men deep. So you're going to be able to throw out different lineups. You're going to be able to play different players. You're going to be able to go matchup driven. Now, of course, it's a little bit of a bummer because you want the big to come off the bench for Bam Adebayo right now to be Kalel Ware. Because eventually what we want and what I think is going to happen, Kalel Ware will start at the center position. Bam Adebayo will start at the power forward position. But the question is, when does that happen? It may not happen. Nikola Jovic is continuing to show that he's not a defensive liability and his offensive game is good enough. So maybe Nikola Jovic keeps that starting power forward spot. We all know that Spo likes to play Bam at the center. So there's going to be a lot of questions going on to this season. And I know it's going to frustrate some Miami Heat fans, but I will tell you this. If we're winning, I'm good with it. Kalel Ware's still raw, you guys. He's about 19, 20 years old, only two years in college. He doesn't have the experience that Pele Larson and Jaime Jaquez had in college. So you know Spoh's going to ease him slowly, especially with his first season like he did with Bam Adebayo. But I will say this, you guys. I am loving this Miami Heat roster. I think this roster can definitely do a lot this regular season. And I think, fully healthy, we can contend with the very best in the Eastern Conference. Whether it's Boston, New York, Indiana, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, I don't care. The Miami Heat, fully healthy, can compete with any of these teams. And I think with the difference that you're seeing in the offensive game, this is really going to change this Miami Heat roster moving forward. So Heat Nation, I want to hear from you. Let me know what you think about yesterday's game. Do you think that this Miami Heat team are going to be a way better offensive team in the regular season? We know how we are defensively. We know we're top five. Hands down, we're one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. But if we can get our offense to a top 10 level, we'll easily be a top four team. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to like the video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Remember the contest I have going on, you guys. Get me to 5,000 subscribers by the beginning of the regular season against the Orlando Magic on October 23rd, and we will do a $50 giveaway for you guys. Thank you so much for the continued support, you guys. Until next time, your boy Ernest out, and that is enough said. Yeah, buddy. Let's go here.